Let me give you a backstage pass to my video editing workflow and show you how I add motion graphics to my video very quickly and very easily using Motion VFX plugin. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you edit your video in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, you may have heard of a company called Motion VFX. And if you haven't, what they do is create different motion graphic plugins that you can apply very simply to your video timeline. This is definitely going to be one of those things that helps increase the production value and it will also save you a lot of times too. This means that you don't have to go in and worry about every single keyframe or layering, for example, in motions or after effect. Obviously, there are going to be some limitations that their plugin can't do, but for what I do, for instance, I like to produce these educational content video for you guys, but predominantly I am a photographer. So I'd rather be photographing more so than just sitting in front of my computer, editing these videos and refining all these graphic motions. So their plugin have made this super easy for what I do. Majority of their plugins are the one that I have purchased out of my own fund and I have been using their product for quite some time now. So when they reached out to me with a few of their new plugins and asked me to do a demonstration, I said, yes, absolutely. I think this is going to be really great because I like to share these great products with you in case you do video too. You can go ahead and browse on their website. There are so many different plugins that you can get. This is the one for Final Cut Pro and you can see there are plenty of them. The moment you purchase one and download, what you have to do is download an M installer software, which is pretty much what you're seeing on the screen right now. And from there, all these plugins are linked to your account. You're allowed to install these plugins on two different computers. So for instance, all these plugins are installed on this computer already. So that's why it's certainly installed. But for instance, some of them I have installed on my Mac Pro as well, which is the other computer. You can see that two out of two licenses used. So you always have two seat with every single one of their license with some exception, for example, M Light Diffusion, it comes with four license. But most of the time, you're only going to get two license from their product. And once you have the download install, you will simply go into Final Cut Pro, go into your timeline. And if you go into the title effects, it just shows up right in there. It's super easy. I have all these different things. For example, I have M Behavior, M Specs, M Called Out. And if you ever wonder, for instance, when I do the display reviews, I use a lot of their plugin to just track the display when I'm doing like the pan motion and they make tracking super easy with um, their Mocha tracker. So two of their newer plugins that I'll be doing a demonstration on, one of them will be M Title Cinematic. And as you can see right now, they have so many different titles that are model after different movies. And I think this is really cool to add a title to your video and you can add them in creative ways. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. And the other plugin we're going to look at is M Tutorial. The timeline I'll be using is from my recent macOS preference video. So this is going to be the perfect companion to that. Let's start out with M Title Cinematic. And as you can see already, there are so many of them that you can choose from. For instance, I'm going to go and add some effect on top of my video. And to do that, you would simply just pick the one that you want. You can even scrub it to do a preview. And let's say I want this and I want it onto my video right there. I can just drag it on top. You can scrub it right there. And if you want to move it around, you just grab their handle and move it to the side. So obviously this white color is really blending in the background. If I want to change the color, it's as simple as going in there and picking the colors that you want to use instead. So for instance, I'm going to change all this to purple in keeping with our theme. There we go. All right. So we're not going to use for term to summit. For example, I'm going to say, the preferences because this is all about macOS preferences and I can certainly scrub on the timeline to see how much it's going to expand now that I have seen that I don't really like the fact that this is really taking up a lot of space there and it's almost like running into my head and also the frame so what I can do with this is go in and customize it further I can change the tracking I can also change the font that I want to use let's say I want to use bank gothic and I'm going to track this a little bit closer or current it a little bit closer I can do that on the word there in the very top, it says reaching. I'm going to say Mac, for instance. We're going to change the font to Bank Gothic. And what I'm going to do is increase the size of the font. So this does give you a lot of room to really go in and customize this the way how you want it to. And simply enough, without even just rendering, you can just play it back like I'm doing on it right now. And this is all 4K clip. So this is showing up on a 4K video with no problem whatsoever. Now, if you want to add a title to your video without it being on the clip, without that transparency thing, you can certainly do that too. 
So for instance, I'm going to pick like another clip. Let's do this one. I like this one, the rise of Android. So we're going to put this one right there and you just drag it onto your timeline like so. And you can also add it that way without having it being on your clip or nested on top of your clip. So a couple of different ways you can do that. And it does give you a lot of options for customization. One of the favorite ones out of this pack in general, I always love these oak leaf thing that looks like the film festival. So I'm going to put this on the side. Right now I can customize this. I'm going to say best tutorial ever. All right, so now I've done that, I can simply change the color by clicking on the color box in each of the items and adding the color. And if I don't want something, for example, if I don't want the oak leaf, I can certainly turn it off just by clicking on and off just like that. If I want to change the color, I can certainly do that. I can also have it be another color. It doesn't have to be the same color. So you can go in and customize all these things. You can go in and scale it. For instance, make it larger, smaller, depending on what you want to do. You can rotate the thing. So it does give you a lot of options. And if you don't want to really spend, like I said, too much time in motion or in After Effect, this is definitely one of the good things that you can do is that you can customize it very simply enough just from this inspector panel. All right, so let's now move on and talk about the M tutorial, which is I already gone in and add a few things into this video. So we're going to start with this one. For instance, this is a part where I am talking about clicking on something. And with the M tutorial, by the way, there are many different sections. For example, there's plugin, there's background, focus, there's the guide that you can use. There's a lower third miscellaneous. There's also placeholder pointers and also different titles that you can add in. So for instance, you can preview their titles here and they show you different samples, you can always use those. But one of the things that come to my attention right away is this one is the lesson plan. And what I can do in the very beginning of the video, instead of putting like this best review ever, I can also put in a lesson plan so I can customize this, bring it into the video and you can see that right there on the side. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is that if you go in and customize these things, there's no master color change. You can go in and change all the color once. You have to go through each of the element one by one. So if you have a lot of information that you want to add in, it can sometimes be a little tedious, but it's just one of those things you have to work with. It just depends on what you want to do. But I find that overall this works really well for me. But you can see how we can simply add a lesson plan to this or the course introduction to let people know at what time they can skip to and view the next section. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is because I have to click on something, I am going to add this mouse effect, which is really cool. And you can use this to really enhance what you do, make it a point. So I'll do this. For instance, I have to click on a plus sign. And what I have done is literally put the mouse there, click, and now it goes away. A couple of other things I've gone in and add on this clip as a demonstration would be, let's go towards the end, would be this. So for instance, I have added a few effects to this one. One of them being the fact that I did a right click in a desktop and kind of just pointing people attention towards where you want to click. For instance, I added this blue bubble there. And what I can simply do is click on this thing. I can change the color. Let's say I really want this to jump out. I can do red and you can have this just kind of move around the screen the entire time. The next thing what I have done is add this blur effect to this dialogue so that it's just focusing the attention not on anything else but just on this dialogue alone. This is really good if you want to call out a dialogue but you're just recording on a desktop so it makes it hard. There are a lot of ways to customize these plugins. For example, with this blur frame dialogue, you can go in and what I simply have done is just change the size and just rescale it that way. If you want to rotate, well, let's move this out a little bit. If you want to rotate, you just grab that handle and you can just rotate it just like so. So it doesn't necessarily have to conform to like all the square format or anything like that. You want to change the frame color? You can certainly go in and customize that too. You can also change, for example, the line width. Let's do a little bit thicker at 10 pixels. You can change the roundness of it, make it less round, all square, or make it really round. So it does give you a lot of options. Now, the other thing is that when this comes in, you're going to see right now that it has that animation, right? So you can always disable the animation in or out. For instance, if I don't want the animation in, I have that off right now. It's just going to jump into that right away. So I'll show you that it just abruptly comes in. 
But if you enable the animation, it has that nice uh, movement coming in. So you can see right now how that zooms into the frame and then it blurs everything out. Same thing with the animation out, you can do that. You can choose to change, for example, background effects. You can um, drop the shadow on or off, for instance, I have the background effect on, you can turn it off, but if I don't want it to be that blurry, I can go in and reduce this. I mean, this may just be enough for me so that people can still see the background, but it's, you know, not taking attention away. So there are, like I said, so many ways to customize these plugins from Motion VFX. If you haven't looked at our product yet or their plugin yet, I highly recommend that you do, especially if you do video editing. If you have any questions about this or comments, leave them below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell when you, and remember, in art we trust.